I've been wanting to <clears throat> talk about a couple things for a while, and I just haven't really had time. Been working so much. You know that uh, that scripture that says the enemy will come in and wear out the saints of the Most High is manifesting in not only my life, but many other brothers and sisters' lives. And glory be to God for it. Our Lord declared the end from the beginning, the Alpha and the Omega. Yet he always was and he always will be. And me and my house, we will forever serve and worship and praise him. So I've been wanting to talk about a couple of things. Um, and I just, again, I haven't had time, but I dare not bring up these things on uh, Passover and take away from the glory of God, glorifying God, because this is a time where, you know, even though a, most, a lot of brothers and sisters didn't keep it the way that the Lord commanded us to and have a sacred assembly and desire to bring the offering, bringing the offering made by fire unto him as he commands us to, you know, we still, um, we still were thinking about, um, most believers were thinking about the passion and, and the, the sacrifice that our Lord and Savior Yeshua Mashiach, Jesus Christ made for us. So I didn't want to take away from that, but now that Passover is now over as it is evening on um, the evening of Saturday, April 16th. There's a couple of things I've been wanting to talk about. And this is a word from the Lord that the Lord gave me for this video. And it says, this is Jeremiah 25. And it says, and go not after other gods and serve them and worship them and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord, that ye might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. And so, amen. This is um, a word that the Lord gave me. And brothers and sisters, a lot of people don't, um, they don't understand and they don't believe and they don't see that, yes, they're believers in Yeshua and they're in this Christian truth or community, but they worship idols. And let me explain. I, I want to share with you. Um, how this happens is that anything brothers and sisters that you put above God, anything that you put above the word of the Lord and following, like say for instance, um, you know, knowledge, there's a lot of earthly and worldly knowledge that brothers and sisters that they love to talk about. When they hear, when they've heard these things all the days of their lives and they've read about them and heard them, it's moved them. They, they really enjoy and they really love these things. They love this, this type of knowledge, okay? And it's worldly knowledge. When it talks about in Hosea 4, when it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, right here in verse six, when you read this in context, brothers and sisters, this is the knowledge the Lord was talking about. It says, by swearing, lying, killing, stealing, committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn. See, it, it's it right here. The Lord says, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. The knowledge of God that he commanded us and that he was taught, that he taught to us in the Old and the New Testament was mercy, was knowledge of God, meaning love 
compassion, grace, forgiveness. This is truth. This is the way that Jesus Christ taught us. He, he wasn't, Jesus Christ didn't come here and teach us about um, how all the things in the cosmos work and how lightning and, and all these things, you know, and brothers and, and the things in history. That's worldly knowledge. That's worldly knowledge. I want to give you an example, brothers and sisters. And this is the idols that many, um, that many, many believers, these types of things, they exalt above the word and the will of the Lord. And they exalt and they worship and they put this above the truth and the will and the, and the word of the Lord. And they put it above Christ. And Christ is the only thing that will free humanity from what is plaguing them right now and what is holding the world and filling the world with sin. I want to give you an example, brothers and sisters. There has been this thing that there's, there's people that really believe that blood is blue. Okay. They believe that blood is blue and that it's the only time it turns red is when it hits oxygen. And brothers and sisters, this is not true. This is a myth. This is a fable. When you say that something is something, you're saying that predominantly by, by people saying that they're saying that predominantly blood when it's in the bot is blue. And it may have certain different things like copper or something that might give it kind of, um, it might have blue, uh, some sorts of blue pigment, but that's not true. It's not true, brothers and sisters. This is a lie. This is, it's, it's a fable. But we have been taught this in this worldly knowledge growing up and we've adopted it. Many people have adopted it adopted that as truth and then they seek these other worldly things right and they say that it's 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 the will of the lord to teach thee no the will of the lord is that we teach and we are an example of the love of god and the love of christ that's the lord's will for every one of us because when as as the people of god do that more and more it spreads christ it spreads love and let me tell you something brothers and sisters if even half of the people who proclaim and decree and declare that jesus christ is their lord lived that way with the love of christ and examples of that this world would not be in the condition in the state that it's in right now i want to show you something in Ezekiel 20, it says, and as for you, O house of Israel, this is what the Lord God says, go and serve your idols, every one of you, but afterward, you will surely listen to me, and you will no longer defile my holy name with your gifts and idols. For on my holy mountain, the high mountain of Israel declares the Lord God, there the whole house of Israel, all of them will serve me in the land there, I will accept them and require your offerings and choice gifts, along with all of your holy sacrifices. This is after the tribulation, brothers and sisters, because God's people are going to inherit the promised land, and they're going to rule and reign as a line of priests that are going to serve the Lord in the promised land. The Lord, a lot of people think that they're going into heaven, and, and they are. There's a part, there's the soul that goes into that heavenly places, brothers and sisters, but the Lord gave the dominion of the earth to his people. He made earth for his people. He made earth for Adam. He created the things of the earth so that mankind and all of creation would glorify and praise him. God's people are going to inherit the promised land. The dominion under all the heavens is going to be given to them. And the enemy has been ruling and reigning in the earth and been given this world for a short season, but that is soon coming to an end. So another thing I wanted to talk about, brothers and sisters, well, well to, in conclusion, what I was just talking about is people 
yes, they don't have golden or wooden or metal statues named Baal and stuff that they go before, like back in the day, our brothers and sisters did you do that. But now they worship the things of their own mind, their own heart, their own thoughts and opinions, and things like how they think that they should keep Passover, the way the way that they think is acceptable to keep Passover. They exalt and worship that over the way that the Lord decreed and declared and commanded us in his word. Those are the types of idols that our people are practicing right now. But just, but brothers and sisters, remember, this is all written. But right now, there is a holy, dedicated, set apart remnant, holy remnant that will be delivered that will be protected, that will receive a glorified body if they continue on the path that they are. So the, the last thing I wanted to talk about was you, you'll see in the world, brothers and sisters, there is a lot of chaos that is going on. And the reason why this has happened, brothers and sisters, is this asteroid Apophis came by the earth in about the past year. And when it went by us, that was the physical sign, right? As you can see, the number in Apophis, brothers and sisters, is 999, but upside down, it's 666. And then it's also the number 42 for the 42 months the 42 month time where they will trample the holy city which is going on right now which a lot of people who are um preachers teachers pastors people in our community will tell you that this 42 month period hasn't started yet okay but this when this asteroid went by us it was telling us that the spirit of chaos was now moving through the earth. And when this sign first happened, brothers and sisters, yes, there was chaotic things that happened in the beginning. But when these signs happen, it takes a few months for it to fully manifest, for it to get into full swing. Like when the riders in the book of Revelation started riding, yes, some of the things that said they'll happen when those certain riders in Revelation ride started happening. But it's not until now to where they're really happening. You know, the, the few writers in the book of Revelation. So it takes a while for these things to manifest. But now we're a good ways since the first sign, since the first time that this asteroid went by us. And it when that asteroid went by us, it left that spirit of chaos going throughout the world. And it is being used by the enemy, brothers and sisters, to get, I, I want to show you something. Okay. Hold on just a second. Well, anyway, I, I can't, I don't know where it's at right now, but basically these people were saying, if I know, if I knew that this was going to happen when they were traveling, all of this chaos, if they knew that this was going to happen, that they would have just stayed home. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, that Satan and the son of perdition is going to exploit this inhumanity. In, in these end days, because basically people are going to be willing to do it by our prayers, brothers and sisters, and mitigating and interceding for people. That's why it's so important to come together and to pray, because people are willing. People would much rather take the easier road than to go through things that are uncomfortable. OK, and Satan and the son of perdition is going to be banking on that people are going to be willing to do whatever 
to to get their peace back, to get their food, to get the things of this world back. Because the time is coming, brothers and sisters, when the most eat, when terrible times are coming soon, there's going to be a food short way worse than it is now. It's not going to really start manifesting until next year. But the enemy is going to exploit these things in people to get them so desperate that they're willing to do whatever to get the things that they need for their comfort. Because what they need, they need things of this world over needing Christ and see the Lord and Christ is guiding is what the true children of God need. And that is their everything. And he will lead it. Those who really do have Christ and a relationship with the Lord in the times when there's no food and calamity going everywhere, the Lord will protect them. He will deliver them. He will provide for them because they have made the Lord their hiding place. A lot of people say, oh, whenever you're stressed out, just, just decree this, this psalm. No, that psalm says those who make the Lord their hiding place, not at that very moment, but who have lived a life making the Lord their shelter and their refuge, while other believers spent their time doing whatever they wanted to, not spending time with the Lord, chasing their own desires, but yet proclaiming to be Christians. This is a problem, brothers and sisters. And this is only going to get worse. And now humanity has been exiled further and further into Babylon. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. There is soon going to be an invasion on this soil, on the soil of America. I don't know if it's going to be the Russians or the Chinese or the UN I don't, or all of them combined. I don't know. All I know is that it's going to happen and it's going to happen soon. And only those who are ready, who have gotten prepared, who have made the Lord their hiding place are going to be ready. And those who are those people are the ones the Lord is going to use to help lead and guide others in the most desperate time of humanity. God bless each and every one of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. I love you all.